Go ahead, whenever you're ready. Welcome back. Do you have worms in your bath? Bath, it's gotta be bath. Do you have worms in your bath? Ew! Welcome back. I'm standing in front of a brick wall right now because if I stood in the spot where you could actually see the thing I'm gonna talk about, the sun behind it just completely blows the image out. And so we're standing here in kind of a neutral background like some sort of some sort of artsy thing. And then we're gonna talk about the thing. Fountain. Some years ago, at the time when I wrote my book, Compost Everything, I had a couple of different ways that I had kept worms, composting worms. I loved the idea of composting worms from the first time I had heard about it. And then I got Mary Applehoff's book, Worms Eat My Garbage, and I had read about it in a couple of other books, and I was just on this, this worm kick, like, how could I do this? And we moved a few times. We rented a small house. We didn't really have much outdoor space, so I did that worm bin thing where you take a couple of Rubbermaid bins and you nest one into the other one and you make your own homemade worm bin. There's things that are kind of comparable to it that you could buy, but I never liked the idea of spending that much money and they were kind of expensive, like you know, $80 for this worm bin setup. And I said, I can do that, something similar for about you know 16 bucks maybe by going to Walmart. And so that's what I did. And that worked quite well. We had some issues with fruit flies and other things like that over the years, but it was nothing really particularly serious. And we always had a little bit of castings that we could harvest. Well, a little later I realized worms were not that difficult to keep. And so I started experimenting with putting them outside. And I, I had bought this house in Tennessee and I had an old refrigerator that had been left with the house that was broken. So I took the insides of it out and I took the door of it off, took the shelves out and the ice maker and all that stuff. And I filled it full of mulch and shredded paper and fall leaves and all kinds of things. And I got some worms from a friend's worm bin and I just put in like a big double handful of worms in the middle of it. And then I started using it as our regular compost pile. So it was a refrigerator on its back with a few holes punched in what used to be the back of it for drainage. And it was just up on a couple of blocks. And I would put a piece of pl old plywood over the top of it with a couple of blocks to keep it from blowing off. And I had that shoved back into the bushes, kind of out of sight, out of mind, where the neighbors wouldn't see it. And we didn't have any fence at that point, so I didn't want to you know, think I was starting some sort of appliance graveyard back there. So that worked really well. And they would eat all the compost, and they bred, and they bred, and they bred. And even though it got cold and it froze, I think the insulation of that refrigerator plus the top that was on it, plus all the material that was in there, was enough to keep them through the winter. Fast forward a few years later, we're living in North Florida, and I have this dishwasher that doesn't work. And I thought, well, I made a worm bin out of a refrigerator. Why not make one out of a dishwasher? So I took the dishwasher and, you know, it, it mounts under the counter like this, and I did the same sort of thing where I tipped it back like this. So here's the bin underneath, and then now it had a hinged top, and I took all the guts out of it, and did the same thing, put in a bunch of shredded paper and leaves and stuff, put some worms into it. This time I had to buy some because I didn't have any that I brought with me. So I had to buy a pound of worms and I put them in there. And then over time I had a little worm bin and I put drainage holes in the bottom so I could collect the leachate to use for the garden. And it was kind of this ramshackle thing that I had back behind the barn where I kept worms for some years. It worked really well. So I, I found that keeping worms was not really particularly difficult. And then, and then, I saw Jeff Lawton's worm bin in a bathtub. And I had heard of keeping worms in bathtubs before, but I liked the fact that there was already a drain on the bottom, that it wasn't something that was made of a bunch of plastic with bits and pieces of foam and stuff in it, and that it, that it was something that I actually had laying around because there was an extra bathtub that I found. So why not make a bathtub worm bin? So I guess it was about a year and a half ago or so, I made a bathtub worm bin. And on that video, people have asked, how did this turn out? Does this work? Does this, you know, is there a follow-up and all that sort of thing? So this video today is the follow-up. After that amazing prelude, let's take a look at the worm bin itself. It's really simple. One of the things people were worried about is what about drainage? Isn't it gonna kill them if they're in there? I mean, you shouldn't let the rain go through it. 
Well, I've let the rain go through it just fine, just as Jeff Lawton said, and they are fine. We've got lots of worms in here. I threw all these leaves in recently. I threw these old rotten, gnarly pears in here. They love them. You can see just the huge amount of castings that we're getting off of them. And I was actually very worried because we hit 16 degrees and this is an elevated bin. And I thought these worms are gonna freeze in here. You know, the, the metal sides coated in that ceramic and I thought it's just gonna get really, really cold. So I had piled all the leaves on top and piled more leaves on top of the cover. And after it froze, when it got up to about 32 or so the next day, or a couple of days later even, it was below freezing for 48 hours. So when it got up to around 32, I tentatively pulled some of the leaves back and pulled the top back and looked underneath and I saw frost inside of it. And I looked and I saw this little red worm and as the light hit him, he just kind of moved away really slowly through the frost crystals, which surprised me to death because I thought these things would die in that, that level of cold. So it worked, but I wouldn't count on it if you were up in, say, zone 5 or something. I would probably put something like this inside of your barn, you know, where it's not going to get really, really, really cold and, and freeze them solid because I'm pretty sure if they froze solid, they'd be done. I don't think they're magic worms, and they can't, they can't go that deep into the ground, you know. So this cover right here, that just goes over it, this is a piece of landscape fabric, and I put a brick in it to hold it down like this. And then over here, at the other side, see we've got these PVC joints, which are really important because if you have these things, so you can put one worm in this side and then it'll come out two on either side of it, which is how they, they asexually reproduce. And so if you have these PVC joints, it absolutely increases the amount of worms that you're getting. You just keep, you drop them in, you know, and then they divide and they split. So that's why I keep those there. And look down here. This is the drainage side. There are just worms all through these leaves. The reason this thing does not drown all the worms is that way down underneath here is the drain. And that drain has some screening over the top of it. So even if it gets sludgy in here, look at how sludgy it is. That's incredible, beautiful stuff, isn't it? Super bacteria and fungi rich. Down here there's screening that I pinned down with a brick. There's the brick. And there's a mass down here somewhere of screen. There it is, there's some of the screening in the bottom that the water runs out through. And it's enough drainage that even when it pours on top of it, it doesn't drown the worms. And the worms are really good, even when it's super wet. They're really good at just getting on top of it and, and kind of staying over the wettest parts. They're not really trapped in there, per se. They can actually get up uh, to the top layer. And then the final wonderful thing about the drain is that the drain comes out here into the worm tea. And every time it rains, more comes out of here and drips into this bucket. So that's a combination of undigested food and worm droppings and worm urine and who knows what else, but it's full of bacteria and fungi. And we take this and I either apply it directly to the garden beds or I thin it out and use it as a inoculant. It's like having a compost tea. Some people don't like this and it freaks them out, but pretty much nothing freaks me out. So I use this stuff directly all the time. The gardens never have any problems with it. And 
I think that the worms are really, really good at incubating a bunch of useful and beneficial bacteria and fungi. So by either applying their castings or putting this worm tea on, I'm adding some of that good stuff into the gardens, which should train the plants even better to defend themselves and to have a really good biome around them. So you, know, so, you know, when you have more bacteria or you have more insects, it's better than when you have less because you have a wide variety and then you get a network of interactions going on rather than just one thing that causes a plague where you have a really sterile situation and then you have one bad thing come in. Instead, you have a whole bunch of different checks and balances of microorganisms. One of the things about worm castings is that if you were to buy them, they would be expensive. I've bought them before and they're expensive. And I also don't know what are going into them. You know, what, what, what things went into those worm castings? So, you know, we've had issues with contamination of hay and manure with Grazon. And I, I even shudder to think of what other contaminants have ended up in our gardens through various purchased amendments over the year. What could have ended up in there? What did we end up eating indirectly at some point? So when you have your own worm bin, you know that those castings are from whatever you have fed them. So if it's fall leaves, well, you don't have to worry about that. If it's manure from your own animals and you know what the animals were fed, well, you don't have to worry about that. You know, if it's scraps from your kitchen, you don't really have to worry about that. Where do those things come from that you're putting in there, you know, and, and what's going to go into your garden? So it's something to think about both on the economic scale of producing your own castings is much more affordable. And then secondarily, you know, what went into it? Now you know, you have more control over your ultimate food supply and what ends up in there. So with this bathtub worm bin system, it's a very simple way to make castings. When it's warmer out, I'll show you guys some castings gathering because I'd like to gather some of those castings for our uh, spring transplants because they're they're like magic when you mix them into the, the transplanting mix. But uh, right now it's so cold out, I don't really want to stress the worms that much by pulling it all out and spreading that out. And, and you know, we'll, we'll wait until it's a nice warm day where we uh, don't mess our workers up too much. Also, if you want to learn more about composting in general and the very many different crazy experiments we've done over the years and how we managed to feed our garden for free, check out my book, Compost Everything, The Good Guide to Extreme Composting, which is very popular. You can check out the reviews on Amazon. People love it because it makes composting simple and it gives you lots of ideas. And if you're the sort of person that likes to lay in bed at night thinking up different crazy things you're going to do in the garden and then researching seed catalogs and books and watching YouTube videos, this book on composting is for you. I think you'll like it. So check it out. Compost everything. I'll put a link below. Thank you all for joining me. I've been off for a bit and I am back on. We've got some other content coming soon. So stay tuned, like and subscribe and all that stuff. And until next time, May your thumbs always be green. Tell him about the worms. Worms? They bite!